Welcome back to another episode of Overkill Homestead. We're changing our name. It's day 173. <laughs> All right, so right, kids, here we go. Jonathan, let's explain what all this is. Oh, jeez. So, this is a rough layout for the plumbing inside the pump house. I'm going to explain it really fast, right? Okay, real fast. So, Not we, have, we have the, the water line coming from the big catchment tank. It comes right up through the middle, and we're going to call it right here. We've got a T. Off of that T, we're going to go two places. Mm -hmm. First is over here. It's gonna go out to what we call the gravity spigot, right? So if the pump is ever off or it loses power, it decides not to work, we can still get water out of this tank just by opening up that gravity spigot. The other side goes to the water pump, right? So this is a 12 volt RV pump. It's gonna hook up to our little power system. Out of that- Do you want me to explain the rest? Sure, go for it. Out of the water pump, uh -huh. we're gonna have flexible tubing mm -hmm. with these Tees. No, what's the... Tees. <laughs> Flexible tubing goes here. This one right here goes to the PEX that goes into the chicken run. Yeah, all those those uh, spigots that garden. we put in on the inside of the chicken run, the chicken coop, that's what will pressurize those guys. Yeah. Where does this go? Right here. This one uh -huh. goes to a pressurized faucet. Yeah, What's that's it? also on the outside of the pump house, but it's a little bit higher, a little bit easier to access. Yeah, see, we got this. And we're not done yet though. Uh -oh. And then we also have to go to the pressure tank, which gives you extra pressure in that whole system, right? Uh -huh. And so that's what another one of these T's are that comes over here. It's gonna go into the pressure tank. And then there's the last one, which is my kind of crazy mad scientist idea, mm -hmm. is that what I want this to do in case of like, Let's say we get a year, which we've heard about this happening, where it's like a solid week of below freezing temperatures. I mean, hardly hey, ever happens, but you know what happened this year? Like thousand year rain events. So <laughs> we don't know what's gonna happen. So just in case it decides to freeze for a really long time, we want a way to drain out the water. From, through the whole system. Through the whole system. And if we had put in frost-free spigots, it probably would be easier. Mm -hmm. but we made it a little harder on ourselves. So I want the gravity spigot to also work as a low point drain. The way that we do that is we tee off the pressurized side of the pump and we run it to right here. Uh -huh. and the reason for that is, is this already has a backflow preventer. So once it, once it pulls this water through, or I guess it's coming this way. way. Once it pulls the water through, it can't go back. So it's not going to drain. So we have to be on this side of it. And that way, when we, we'd have to turn off the, we'd the have ball to turn valve, off the ball we'd valve have to turn the off tank. the ball valve at the tank, and then we would turn off the pump, uh -huh. and then we would open this gravity thing, and theoretically, everything above this should flow out. Babe, this makes me so proud. I don't know if this is going to work. It's going to work. We're going to see what happens. <laughs> Um, should we have a disclaimer? We are not plumbers. We are not electricians. I think that's fairly obvious, but, uh, we are not plumbers. We have no idea what we're doing. Oh, that's not true. Well, you have a good idea of what we're I mean, doing. this, this is based on our, our, pump our existing pump house, which has been going strong for two, like two years. It yeah. works great. Mm -hmm. Uh, and the flexible tubing made it a lot easier to, it made, made it a lot more flexible because because you can put it on these hose barbs and clamp it down. And if you need to make adjustments, there's a lot of play in it and it moves around and you're not stuck with hard PVC pipe, which can be a real bear. So- Hey, you know what the hardest part of this is? Getting done with the intro. <laughs> <laughs> that, and also putting the tape on the stupid threaded parts. Ugh. Why is it so confusing? That's where it always leaks is the threaded connections. Yeah. Anyway. You. Ready to get started for the day? Or do you want to talk? Do you want to say anything else? No, I don't think we're, we're it's already late. We're not going to finish this today, but we're going to get started. That's my disclaimer. Hey, we're not plumbers. It won't get done today. Ben, you figured all this out on your own. I'm so I guess. Proud of you. Yeah, I guess I did. Yeah. And spent a small fortune in fittings. Yep. Let's get started. <laughs>
Is this all the video that we'll have for the day, babe? <coughs> My butt? <laughs> We got our first fitting together and now we want to make sure that this isn't going to leak. So this is the way you test plumbing if, um, so you know if it's going to leak or not. <laughs> we did it. It's not going to leak. Look. Disclaimer, that is not how leak tests work. Here, catch. Here, catch. Here, catch. So, one thing I guess we haven't really mentioned is the reason that we're using flexible tubing and nylon hose barbs is that all of that stuff, even these, will expand and contract a little bit. So, we're just trying to protect against any sort of freezing. And so, they make, I think it's poly versions of these that are like harder, darker plastic, and they're made for a higher pressure, but what they're not great about is expanding and contracting when temperatures get low. So in our case, this is a very low flow pump. We don't have to worry about high pressure, so we're going for maximum freeze protection. <laughs> i 
We need to thread these. You need to thread these. Oh, you're my thread girl. I'm your thread girl. I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of you. No, I'm so proud. Just let me be proud of you without you having to be proud of me. Okay, I'll take it. Thanks. It looks really nice. Yeah? Yeah. It's. A, I mean, things are going everywhere, but you yeah. can't really help that because of all the different areas that it has to go to. It's got a, going a lot of weird ways, and it's flexible. It's yeah. the whole point. We want it to be to be able to go kind of in not perfectly straight lines. Right. So we are running out of daylight. We're going to have to finish this up tomorrow, but everything is hooked up except the power to the pump. Right. And the, the switch. And the switch. So there's a switch we're going to put mount on the outside of here so we can, we can turn it off and on without pulling the whole thing apart. Yeah. Um, and then it's just a matter of pressure testing each part. So we'll you know, we'll let the water in mm -hmm. and we'll turn each ball valve and wait and see mm -hmm. if there's any leakage and then see what we need to do. Yeah, but I'm pretty sure that we're not going to have any leaks because I did a lot. You I did a lot of water you testing. You really taped it good. Well, I did a lot of water testing. <laughs> That's so true. I'm, I'm pretty sure we're your, solid. Your expert scientific water test. Uh -huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We'll be back tomorrow. Hook up the water or the hook up the pump. Yep. And. What's and after I, that? And I think when we do that, other than building some sort of little thing over that up. exposed area, which we don't need to worry about right yeah. the second, um, I think we're done with the pump house. Whoa. Whoa. Why did your watch always make sound? It's very excited about the pump house. It can't help it. <laughs> All right. So that's it for today? That's it. I All guess right. we'll... Mm, let's figure that almost, out. Almost got it. I almost nailed so it. So close. Okay. Let's try again. So that's it for today. We'll see you tomorrow.